Are you going through some trials or are you going through some temptations? Those two words are so real when you start living your life temptations and trials. That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, my name is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. My prayer is that as you watch, you don't only watch a program, I pray that you experience Jesus in your life today. of our series called Stages, Finding God Where You Are. And so far, we've covered two stages. The first two stages from birth to 40 years old. We said that in the first two stages of the human journey, you have two goals. How many? Two goals. To explore, say explore, and to expand, say expand. We said that in stage one, your goal is to explore your gifts and your abilities. And then in stage two, your goal now is to expand those gifts and abilities. And now we're talking about stage three. People who are 41 years old to 60, would you raise your hand? Come on. 
I'm about to enter stage three in just two months. Can you believe it? So let me have some fun while it still lasts. By the way, that's a good lesson. If you want to have more joy in your life, you got to learn how to celebrate whatever stage you're in. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stretch your hands. You know the drill. Everybody say, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. Shout it out! And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So, we're talking about stage three. In stage three, after you have explored and after you have expanded, now your goal is to be exact. Say exact. That's your goal. It's all about eliminating so that you can concentrate. Eliminate so you, that you can concentrate on whatever it is that you want to do. This season is all about subtracting than it is about adding. It's all about knowing what you can do and accepting what you cannot do. Because in life, knowing what you cannot do is as important as knowing what you can do. If you are in stage three of your life, raise your hand again if you're in stage three. That means that you would have had the opportunity to grow the abilities and the skills that God gave you. It means that you would have had the 10,000 hours that's required for you to become a world expert or we call it a master or a sensei or my favorite word of all, a Jedi master. Okay? If you've reached that pinnacle in your stage, I got an advice for you. Don't stop there. Keep going. Keep breaking new barriers. Keep taking new ground. Don't ever let others tell you what you can and cannot do. The sky is not a ceiling. It's just a measurement of the barriers that you've already gone through. That's why God gives you the power. Say power. He gives you the power to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You know this. So your goal is to be exact. But the problem is, life is not always exact. You can be in stage three right now and your life wouldn't still be exact. You would have still some things in your life that's lagging behind, maybe some areas. Because here's the truth. You can be in different stages in different areas in your life. Let me give you an example. In my, in my own life, in my secular life, I found my gifting at a very young age, stage one. I found my gifting, which is selling, I'm in sales, and I grew it there. But in my spiritual life, I'm a late bloomer. I only discovered that side of my life in stage two. And because I'm already nearing stage three, I feel like my family life is still in stage one. Do you get what I'm saying? Your life can be in different stages, in different areas. And this is so comforting for all of us here who might feel like there's some things in our life that's not lined up yet. That's why we like to use the word goal. Say goal. Goal means it's a target. It's what you want to hit. It doesn't mean you're already there, but that's where you want to be. Okay? So now, we've been talking about David in the Bible and so far we've seen David in two stages. We've seen him as a shepherd boy and we've seen him as a warrior. Now we're going to see David as a king. In the Bible, it says that David was 30 years old when he became king and he reigned for 40 years. Now I want you to know that in stage three, this is ideally your harvest stage. Say harvest stage. It's a stage where you're supposed to start harvesting everything that you planted in the last two stages, okay? Let me give you an example. Brother Bo. Brother Bo is now 50 plus. Okay? So Brother Bo is now in his harvest season. He's already harvesting emotionally, spiritually, relationally, 
even financially. And you know what? Good for him. Praise God. But the truth is, whenever you see people like Brother Bo who are in their harvest season, you want to know the first thing that comes to our mind? Ask me what? Brother Bo, how to be you? The more we see people like him harvesting, you know what happens? The more we get discouraged and the more we get disappointed with our own life. Why? Because our life might not be the same. Let me tell you the reason why you get disappointed. The reason why you get disappointed is because you judge your story based on someone else's glory. You compare notes with a season that is not even yours. Don't ever do that. Let me say it differently. Don't ever gauge your stage based on somebody else's page. That's a recipe for disaster. Before you can appreciate David as a king, you got to know first the many years that he spent being David the shepherd boy and David the fighter. The reason why David was now harvesting in his life was because of the many years that he was planting. Do you get what I'm saying? Let's get real. Some of you here have had moments in life where you planted some things that didn't produce. Yes? Some of you planted in a relationship for years, but for some reason, it's not producing. And instead of producing, God even prunes it. You broke up. You got separated. Here's my advice. Keep planting whatever season you're in, whatever stage you're in, because you don't want to miss the opportunity of what God is going to do just because you planted in your season. After all the shepherding, after all the fighting, now we see David in the Bible harvesting. And God tells David this. This is so important. You got to listen to this. God says to David, now, now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone. And I have cut you from all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great like the names of the greatest men on earth. I don't know if you caught it, but God says, I took you. I have been with you. I have cut you. And now I will make your name great. It seems to me that the reason why David was now enjoying this third stage of his life was because it came from God. This is an area in our life where we fail very miserably. Because of the many years we spent growing our abilities, developing our skills, you know what else you develop? Your pride. Your pride. You now think it's all about you. You've forgotten who brought you here in the first place. There comes a point in your life where you need to recognize who brought you here to begin with. Where your help comes from. And I got news for you. God brought you here. If it hadn't been for the grace of God, you wouldn't be standing there. And so if God brought you here, it means He knows exactly what you need. A few days ago, my 10-year-old nephew, his name is Lance, he celebrated his birthday and his dad gave him a gift in the form of a Nokia 3310. How many of you know what a Nokia 3310 is? Some of you don't know what a Nokia 3310 is. You're probably in stage one. You don't know nothing about a Nokia 3310. Back in my time, if somebody gave me that phone for my 10th birthday, I would completely flip out. I mean, imagine I have my own phone. I get to play snake whenever I wanted to. Snake was the hottest game back in the day. Now you got Fortnite. I know that's much cooler. But back in the day, Snake was the bomb. So how did my nephew respond to that gift? Did he explode in excitement? Did he die of delight? No. Absolutely not. You know what he did? He hid that phone from everybody else. He was so ashamed of that phone because it wasn't a smartphone. And you know, he kept on complaining to his dad. He was like, Dad, I'm already 10 years old. This phone is so out of date. I can't believe I have to tap a button multiple times just to get to a letter. What is this, 1993? This phone is so old. This is not for me. Just get me an iPhone. 
you know what the dad said in response to that blew me off my seat. You want to know what he said? He says to his son, this is exactly what you need at your age right now. I could feel God speaking to all of us here today the moment he said that while we're so busy complaining about the lives that we live God I can't believe I'm already 42 years old and I only have this amount of money in the bank God I can't believe I'm already 45 I don't have that baby I've been praying for God I can't believe I'm almost 59 and I'm still not retired this is not the life I dreamed of maybe God is telling you right now this is exactly what you need in your stage right now. If God brought you this far in your life, He knows exactly what you need in your stage. He knows what you need, why you need it, and when you need it. And if God doesn't give it, then it probably means you don't need it. You just got to learn how to trust God in your season. Amen. Amen. My message for you today is uh, very, very simple. Everybody say this with me. God will turn it into good. Tell somebody beside you. God will turn it into good. It comes from Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. Joseph was talking to his brothers. You know, a while back, these brothers were the ones who threw him to a pit and sold him to, as a slave. But then later on, through a circuitous journey, Joseph became governor of Egypt. And I, I want you to understand that, that God turned it into good. God turned it. Why? Because of his character. Everybody say character. In the story, he was a slave of a guy by the name of Potiphar. Say Potiphar. And he had a wife. Ask me, what, what, what's her name? Mrs. Potiphar. <laughs> Mrs. Potiphar. Let's call her Mrs. Potts. She, she had the hots for Joseph, wanted Joseph, you know, and seduced him and, 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 and tempted him. Uh, Joseph said, nope, nope, resisted because of his character. Well, he ended up in jail because Mrs. Potts shouted, rape, falsely, falsely accused. He was brought in prison. But it was in prison that God circumvented the situation and turned it around so that he would become governor of Egypt. How many of you understand this? That whatever situation you are in right now, if you follow God, at the end of the road, you're going to find out He's going to turn it into good. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. I've shared you the story before that when I was a small kid, my father picked me up from school. And I remember that conversation. I was a tiny kid and he was, I was seated here and he was driving. And then, and then I, I asked him, this crazy question. I said, Dad, what will I inherit from you? Of course, he was taken aback. Why are you asking that question? And I said, oh, because my classmate, you know, my classmates, we were talking about inheritance. And one of my classmates said that he's going to inherit land in the province, hectares and hectares and hectares of land. And then my, my, my other classmate said that he's, he's going to inherit the hardware store of the family. Dad, may lupa ka ba? Do you have land? Or do you have a hardware store? And, and my father said, nope, don't have land. Don't have a hardware store. So what will I inherit from you? And my father smiled, and there was this beautiful, you know, silence. And then he said, son, I was really tiny. He looked at me, son, this is what you're going to inherit from me. My character. And I was there, and I said, yippee, character, yay. What's that? And he said, my honesty, my integrity, my faithfulness, you know, my faith. And I said, yippee. Yun lang. <laughs> no land. <laughs> you know, I, I realized this, that our whole lives, 
depend on and are built upon our spiritual character. Now, when you say character, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that you're going to church, you've got character, or you pray, you're, you've got character, or you, you read a Bible, that means you've got character. No, 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 ask me, what's character? What's character? Who you are when no one is watching. I want you to tap somebody on the shoulder and ask that person, who are you when no one is watching? Because when somebody is watching, it's easy to pretend that you're good. You know what I'm talking about? Like in that cafeteria in school, there's this bowl of cookies, and then the teacher put a big sign. What does it say? Pick only one, God is watching. And then at the end of the table is another bowl, a bowl of chocolates this time. But there was a student who wrote a scribbled note. And the note said, get as many as you want. God is watching the cookies. <laughs> but you know what? If you use God as a policeman, and many people do, you know, don't sin, don't do the wrong thing. God is watching. I want you to know that that is a sign of spiritual immaturity that you still need God to be a policeman. You understand me? Because if you're spiritually mature, it's already enough that you know that you are watching you. Oh, you didn't get that. You, di you didn't get that. If you're spiritually mature, you, you don't need a cop. The mere fact that you know that you will violate your values, man, you know that you're going to damage your life. And you don't want to do that. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. You, see, you see, God turns blessings into curses. That, that, that's what God does. He, he turns your, 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 your curse and then he, he transforms it into your blessing. But it's also possible that the curse, I'm sorry, the blessing becomes a curse. Ask me when. When do blessings become a curse? You see, blessings are heavy. Everybody say that. Blessings are heavy. They, they are. And if your spiritual character is not strong enough, everybody say strong. If your spiritual character is not strong enough, you will be crushed by the weight of your blessings. Everybody say, ah. Ah, people don't know that blessings come with burdens. They do. They carry with it burdens. And you need to understand that. What is character then, Brother Bo? If you're saying it's not, it's not going to church and it's not praying and it's not reading, all of that helps, by the way. But that's not character. Character is Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the Spirit is joy, is love and joy and peace. You, you got what I'm saying? And forbearance and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. The Spirit is the one who will do it in you. It give, the Holy Spirit give, bears the fruit of love. Am I making sense? This is what character is. And this is what carries the weight of the blessings in your life. If, if it doesn't have that, me, meaning what am I saying? What am I saying? When, when in, stage, in the stage three of your life, um, Audrey was saying, that's, that's harvest time. Actually, even in stage two, you already, you already experience some blessings of harvest. If you are spiritually unprepared for the harvest, disaster strikes. Ask me why. As blessings increase, as success increase, temptations increase. You got what I'm saying? Let's go to the story of David. May I? David's the center, the central character of an entire series. And David, before he became king, before he became warrior, he was a shepherd boy. And as a shepherd boy, women did not pay attention to him. Yes or no? You're a shepherd boy. You're dirty. You're dusty. You're there. But then he, he began to win 
against Goliath and win in battles. And, and so in 1 Samuel 18 verse 7, it says the women sang. During their parties, they sang. Saul has killed thousands, but David tens of thousands. So that when he became king, again, a lot of women in his life. 2 Samuel 5.13, David took more concubines and wives. And then in Deuteronomy 17, verse 17, you read there that Moses said that should not have happened. The king is not to have many wives because this would make him turn away from the Lord. But that, that, that's, that's the problem. I, I, I remember... Coco Martin was telling me that, you know, for years he was a janitor, he was a messenger, he was a waiter. Were the women all going gaga after him during that time? No. It's only later when you become an actor. When... Now, this, this, this whole idea of a fans club, a, a female fans club, I mean, obviously I, I can relate. Just kidding. You know, there was no social media at that time. I received, there, there was none. So after each talk, I would receive love letters. Love letters in scented pink paper folded seven times. <laughs> to this day, I have no idea what seven folds meant. I, I, I know it's not because of my dashing looks. Nothing. I had no looks. And people say, oh, because you're, you're good. Maybe. But I think it's connected to something else also. Ask me what? It's power. Because I'm a leader. And leader is power. And the problem with this, when the blessings increase and success increase, ask me what else increases? Blindness. Blindness. I'm, I'm going to read. You see, David... David, he was already very successful as a king, and he had his wives, and he had his concubines. He still wanted to have a one-night stand with his neighbor's wife, Bathsheba, married to his military officer named Uriah. Crazy! But the one-night stand did not work because she got pregnant after the romp. And after getting pregnant, well, David had to clean up the scene, so he murdered Uriah, his own military officers. Now think, think, think with me. You think at that time, at that moment, David would say, oh no, what have I done? What have I done? Adultery, murder, no! You think that's what David did? No. When blessings increase, blindness increases. You know what David was doing? <laughs> I murdered clean. No one will accuse me. I'm scot-free. The same David who wrote the Psalms, the same David who fought under the name of the Lord, the same David who, you got what I'm saying? Blind. And that's when God sent a prophet by the name of Nathan to David. And Nathan told him a story. It's a long story, beautiful story. Nathan went to David and said, there were two men who lived in the same town, one who was rich and the other poor. The rich man had many cattle and sheep, while the poor man had only one lamb, which he had bought. He took care of it, and it grew up in his own home with his children. He would feed it some of his own food, let it drink from his cup, and hold it in his lamb. And the lamb was like a daughter to him. One day a visitor arrived at the rich man's home. The rich man didn't want to kill his own animals to fix a meal for him. Instead, he took the poor man lamb and prepared a meal for his guests. David became very angry at the rich man and said, I swear by the living Lord that the man who did this ought to die for having done such a cruel thing. He must pay back four times as much he took. Nathan said, you are that man. Blindness off. Make sense? Am I speaking to somebody in this room? Success has a way of making us blind to the evil that is in our life. And you see, there are three major temptations that we need to fight. How many? When blessings increase, these three temptations increase. Number one, temptations to lust. 
You just have to look at the sexual scandals of the superstars of the world. Sports, politics, church, any field, you have them. In sports, how many of our superstars fell to infidelity? Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, the golfing legend. You know, he was going through re rehab after he got separated from his wife because of all the infidelities. In the therapy, he was required to write down and enumerate the many affairs he had so just to wake up, you know, just to remove the blindness. In showbiz, 263 powerful men, actors, producers, directors, CEOs, exploiting women. In church, oh, do we have to go there? When I was a teenage preacher, the biggest preacher during my time was a man by the name of Jimmy Swaggart. Biggest television audience, millions of people. One day, they found him with a prostitute. Came out in the news. The following Sunday, he goes in front of his congregation of 8,000 people and cries and begs for mercy. I have sinned, he announced to the world on tele television. Four years later, he was again caught with a prostitute. But this time, no repentance. He goes in front of his congregation and he tells them, God told me it's flat, none of your business. Blindness. And you find it all over the place. I find it in me. And you know, the, the reason why I shared to you all about, all about these women who were giving me love letters and all that, you know, if I was a lesser man, I thank God for the character that my father made me inherit. Because I'll tell you, it was so easy to, no, 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 don't clap for me, please. I, I was hanging by the thread. You know, when, when women fall at your feet and you know you're ugly and there's this beautiful woman falling in front of you and begging you to love her, it's so, it was so tempting to say, wala naman but thanks be to God, by the grace of God, He saved me. Second temptation is greed. Say greed. I was only 18 years old, leading the light of Jesus, small, small group, when Tita Nening, one of the original members of our community, came up to me after one prayer meeting, pushes a thick wad of money in my hand. It was an envelope. I looked and it was written in her handwriting, 50,000 pesos. Believe you me, at 18 years old, that was the biggest amount of money I put in my hand. 50,000. This was when I was 18. When 50,000 was 50,000. Today, 50,000 is 50,000. <laughs> and you know what Tita Nenning said? Brother Bo, that's for your car. You know, it's not enough maybe to buy a car, but just add to it and it's a car. And it's true. I just had to add a few more. It's a car. Oh man, it was so hard. I wanted to have a car. You know, when you're 18, you're a guy, you wanted to have a car. But then I look at my community, Light of Jesus. We didn't even have a community vehicle yet. And I knew I had to do the right thing. Well, it was a struggle. I wanted my car. It took a while, finally. I went back to Tita Nening and said, Tita Nening, I'm, whatever money you gave, I'm, I'm going to donate it to the community because... I think the community needs a car more. 13 years later, 10 friends of mine chipped their money in, bought me a car. I had no say in it anymore. I saw it with a red ribbon on top of it. I want you to know that early on, early on, I know that it, was, it would be so easy, so easy to exploit my position in front of you. You trust me. You know what? If I had, if, if I was a lesser man, I would ask you to build my house. And you know what? Some of you will actually do it because you love me, you trust me, you're grateful. Am I making sense to you? And then number three is pride. Of course. Let me, let me tell you how easy it is to fall into pride. It's when you read Scandal after scandal of leader and that leader and this leader sinning and this leader falling. And, and pride says, won't happen to me. This won't happen to me. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. And, and, and to understand that, 
There are four ways of fighting pride. How many? Four ways of protecting yourself. Number one, number one. You see, at the end of the day, it's entitlement. Everybody say entitlement. I deserve this. You know, it's so easy for me to say that after 40 years of building light of Jesus. I did it. 40 years? Don't I deserve it? Pride says yes. But humility says, 40 years, I made so many mistakes. It's by the grace of God that I'm here. It's by the grace of God that light of Jesus is here. This is not me. This is all Jesus. Do you understand me? This is all Jesus. Four things that you need to do. Number one, lead with a limp. All of us have limps. Everybody say, I've got a limp. So lead with it. Don't hide it. Don't pretend you don't have it. Tell the world, you know, you've got vulnerabilities. You, and then say it when you see a scandal, when you see a leader fall, say, could happen to me. <laughs> it will happen to me <laughs> if I'm not careful. If I'm not careful. Here's number two. You've got to protect with partners. Everybody say partners. You know what, what powerful people want? They don't want to be answerable to anyone. But that's a recipe for the disaster. You, you need accountability par partners. People who know all your secrets. No secrets to those two or three or four confidants. I thank God I've got those brothers in my life. I don't know where I would be without those brothers. Number three. Monitor your marriage. Are you married? That's one of the best protections you can ever have if you're married. If, if, if you're not married, please, please don't rush to marriage, okay? Just, I want to be protected. No, <laughs> no, no, if you're married, um, it's, it's, a, it, it's one, a happy marriage is a great protection. And thanks be to God, I have a happy marriage. And, and you know, my, I'm no longer single, so, so the, the women who come up to me and tempt me are, are far in between, but they're still there. But you see, I'm, I have a happy marriage. It's like, it's like my armor. And number four, are you ready for number four? And the most important, if you've got to connect to your core, connect to who you really are. But how do you do that? Ask me how. how? By connecting to your creator. Because that's the only way. That's the only way. You know, you monitor your marriage means how's your daily dialogues and how's your weekly, well, how's your weekly dates and how, how's your time to get the same thing. How's your time with God? Because that's where your strength comes from. And maybe some of you are looking at me and saying, Brother Bo, nice talk, really, really nice talk, but it's too late. I've already fallen. Hey, it's never too late. Because David... He fell. But guess what? In Psalms 51, he said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. God will turn it into good. What, whatever failure you've done in your life, let me tell you something controversial. If you allow God to form your spiritual character, your curses will turn into blessings. I really, really believe in that. And I, I also believe this, that God is found in your detours as much as He is found in your destination. And, and, and maybe you've detoured a bit. God is still there to correct you and bring you back to the right path. When I was a kid, I used to play snakes and ladders. All the stage one and stage two people don't know what I'm talking about. Snakes and ladders, you roll the dice, you move forward, but then there's snakes. You land a snake, you slide down and you kind of like lose a lot. And then you, you land in a ladder and whoop, you climb up. One day I was playing, I hit a snake, I slid down. I said, oh, I'm gonna lose the game. But then in my next turn, I threw the dice and I hit the ladder. And it was not an ordinary ladder. It was the winning ladder. It was so long, it made me climb all the way up. I won the game. Maybe you have slid through a snake. 
you have hit the snake and you're fallen right now, I've got news for you. I want you to trust in Jesus because right beside where you fell is a winning ladder. And that ladder, his name is Jesus. He's going to pick you up from where you've fallen. He's going to raise you up. He's going to bring you to the right place. Do I hear a loud amen? amen? Pray with me. Jesus, I stand before you and I welcome you in my life. You will turn it into good. I've messed up. I've sinned. I've fallen short. Thank you. You are found in my detours. Lead me. I follow you. In Jesus' name. Ako po si Jolly Arquero. Nadiagnose po ako ng breast cancer stage 2 noong August 2015. This foundation thrives on volunteerism. We gather everybody. We try to collect funds. We try to see what we can do for that gathering. Volunteer ako since uh, September 2015 when JCCFC started. We have uh, pastoral care. Sometimes we have mass. Sometimes we have feast video. Ang mga natutunan ko po na mga aral, mula nung natulungan po ako na umpisa ng GCCF Foundation sa pag-attend ko every meeting, marami po sir. Every time na nandito po ako, nakikita ko po yung mga kapwa ko na masigla. So parang ako'y nabibigyan din po ng saya. Some of the challenges that we have are you know, raising funds. Because unlike other mercy ministries, na donors can give clothes, food, not necessarily money. Since we extend financial assistance to uh, cancer patients, the foundation is heavily dependent on donors. To the potentially new donors, be with us. Because uh, there's no other better way than to help the list of our brethren. Sa mga mabubuting loob dyan at malaking puso na tumutulong sa GCCF Foundation, maraming salamat at malaking blessing po sa amin na mga may sakit at may karamdaman. At naway, huwag kayong magsawang tumulong sa amin dahil marami po kayong nabibigyan ng chance na mabuhay muli. Thank you. Hope begins with you. Thank you and hope begins with you. Thank you, hope begins with you. You are a blessing to me. You are a blessing to this ministry just by watching and just by praying for us and by telling the world, hey, watch Karigma TV, it will bless your life. And for those of you who, are, who have decided to be our partners, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. In fact, I'm asking you now, if you have not yet made that decision and, and, and you know, you're hearing God telling you, support Kerygma TV, please say yes to God. And yes, just contact us. And, 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 and tell us, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be a partner. I'm, I'm willing to support your program so that more people will hear God's word and receive God's love. And as our way of saying thank you for any amount whatsoever that you will give this program, we will send back to you a copy of this particular talk that you're hearing. And for a donation of 2,000 pesos or more to this ministry, you shall receive the entire series of stage stages. You know, this, this whole thing just to bless you. It will arrive in your home and you, you, you will be so blessed. Not only that, you will receive my best-selling book, Enjoy 
your age. And this book has blessed so many people already and people come up to me and they say, you know, Bo, fantastic, fantastic book. It spoke to me, it spoke to my heart. I wanna give this book to you as my way of saying thank you for being right here, our partner, our support partner. We can't do this without you. So thank you, thank you. Once again, just contact us right now and we'd, we'd love to send this material over to you. God bless you. God reward you for your kindness and generosity. Hi everyone, welcome to Health and Home. I am Dr. Didoy Lubaton. I'd like to share to you about transformation. And you see it in life and you see it in nature. For example, from a worm to a cocoon and to a butterfly. From a baby, adolescent, and adult, I see people going through transformations, processes, seasons in their life, and sometimes they get sick there, they get stressed out, and they also get stuck. So I'd like to give you some essentials to remember as you go through any transformation in life. Number one, you gotta have time. You gotta give yourself time. Time is your friend. And pagpilit, Pangit. If you force it, it could end up worse. You gotta allow it to grow organically on its own. Second thing is you gotta have technology or techniques. You gotta upgrade your skills, your knowledge, your wisdom. Even ask mentors if you have to. Ask those people who have gone through the transformation and ask them how to go through your own transformation now. Third essential thing is you gotta have terrain. And when I say terrain, good environment. What I mean is set yourself up for success. For example, if you're in a noisy or nosy environment, you will become noisy and nosy because that's where you are. That's where you are marinated and that's why you become your environment. So make sure you have good terrain as you go through transformation. Number four, you gotta have touch. And when I say touch, you gotta have human touch. Meaning, it's good that we are interconnected with one another and let our lives touch one another. Our journeys meet from time to time because we cannot transform alone. We're here together and if we have good connections with one another, we're stronger when we're together. And lastly, most essential for me is you gotta have trust. Because during any transformation or any life process or season, sometimes you don't know. Sometimes the answers are not there. But you know, it will always be good. Trust in yourself, trust your loved ones, and most importantly, trust the God who made this journey for you. He has gone before you, so He knows where to bring you. Have a healthy transformation wherever you are and whatever you're going through. Praying for you guys. Thanks for watching. God bless you.
God is real. That's my declaration to you today. Whatever you're facing right now, God is there with you. And maybe you don't feel him. Maybe you don't hear him, but God is there. Let's pray together. I'm going to pray with you and I'm going to agree, claiming for the blessing of God for your life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that right now we can bring before you all our pain and our hurt and our anxieties and our worries. Yes, as we go through our trials, we know, Father, that you are there with us and beside us. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I agree in prayer. For you said in your word, where two or three agree in anything, we agree right now. I agree with my, 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 my brother, my sister, my friend praying with me that in the mighty name of Jesus, your grace, your healing, your blessing be theirs. Your miracle be theirs in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life. <music>